The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. Okay, good afternoon everyone. My name is Paul Crompton. I'm the VP of Sales for V1 Document Management and welcome to our presentation today where we're going to show you how we can save time, money and indeed storage space by using the V1 Document Management solution. My role today is really just to introduce you to the company and ourselves as an organization and then I'm going to hand you across to my colleague Nick Kudrich who will actually show you a brief tour around the software and then really we can uh, we can open up the lines towards the end of the session for anybody to ask any questions or indeed any queries that you may have in terms of what you've seen. In terms of an organization we've been around now for over 20 years so we're very very experienced in terms of document management and indeed document management is all that we do so we're very very knowledgeable about deploying these types of solutions. In terms of North America uh, we, we now have over 40 customers in a very, very brief, short period of time. But worldwide, we have over 2,500 clients actually using our solutions on a day-to-day -day basis. In terms of global support, we have 17 worldwide offices. And in North America, we have a presence in Boston and also a full-time development office here in Orlando in Florida. Our parent company is actually the fifth largest software company in Europe, which really allows us to access resources and indeed financial strength from a much larger parent company. And our preferred method in terms of route to market is actually through business partners. So obviously with our relationship with Bass, we really engage with Bass um, really for their knowledge, experience and relationships with you, the clients, and then when we deploy the document management system, not only does it en enhance the ACPAC finance system, but that they really work seamlessly together to obviously deliver uh, a, a seamlessly integrated solution. We're actually the software authors to the product, so we own our own products, we develop and support our own products. So there's no real need for us to go to any third parties to ask for any changes to be made to our solutions. We're in complete control of our own destiny as far as the products are concerned. One of our strengths is integrations with finance or ERP systems. So Sage Pack is a very, very productive channel for us. Uh, the integration was actually developed by Sage Pack partners themselves, which again means that the integration is very, very seamless. And obviously, a lot of end users um, will not really see the document management system working behind the scenes. Their main access will still be through the Sage ACPAC user screens. We've won quite a number of awards for our solutions, indeed quite a number of software awards, but also green environmental awards. Of course, document management not only reducing your reliance on paper and in incredibly improving paper-based um, processes within your organization, but of course you can reduce your carbon footprint and indeed the amount of paper that you use within your organization, which is obviously um, in everybody's interest as far as the environment is concerned. And we typically work on a return on investment of about six months as far as our solution is concerned. And I'll, I'll touch on that a little bit later as part of the presentation and we can start to show you ways that you can really evaluate what your own, own return on investment will be by implementing a, the V1 solution. Now in terms of the modules, we prefix all our modules with the term DB been very, very successful for us globally. And there are quite a number of small startup document management companies that, you know, so everybody tends to use the word archive, for example, whereas DB, as I say, has been very, very successful to us. So you'll actually hear Nick referring to DB archive and DB capture, for example, as part of the presentation. Now, our modules are similar to Sage Pack. Some clients prefer to take some modules. Some clients prefer to take all the modules. It really depends on where the pains in your business are and what, obviously what the immediate return is going to be. 
The main module we have is what we call DB Archive. This is our central storage deposit. So indeed, every document that's within your organization coming, uh, being received into your organization, nor indeed going out, a copy can be indexed, stored, and tagged, if you may, into your DB Archive system. Across the top, you'll see a number of ways of getting documents in. So we have DB Scanner. So for any document you may have, a contract, a legal document, a HR record, a copy of that document, you know, and a, the image of that document can be deposited directly into your DB Archive system. We can also bring in XML or EDI as it's commonly known. So if any clients are actually dealing with the large supermarkets, that's usually their preferred channel of communication. So again, we can bring in documents straight into your archive system as a, uh, you know, and obviously tag those details as well. Where you see the Microsoft Office and PDF logo, if you have documents already in electronic format, the last thing we want you to do is to print those documents and then to scan them. We really don't want you touching paper as any part of the process. So we can actually um, deposit documents that are already in electronic format, so PDF or JPEG, you know, any, any um, format at all, straight into the archive system so that you have one single secure repository for, for documents and everybody knows you know, where to find them, basically. The module that we're going to show you today is what we call DB Capture. Um, this, is our, this uses some technology called OCR. Technically, OCR stands for Optical Character Re Recognition. Non-technically, it basically means it's able to read a document. It can read the data from a document, and it's intelligent enough to understand what that data means. Um, so, for example, for vendor invoices, you can receive in and scan a vendor invoice, and our system will recognize who the vendor is, it will extract the data, and it will process that through to your Sage Pack system without a human being actually touching that process. So again, we'll show you as part of that, uh, as part of the demonstration today, the DB Capture module working. On the bottom left, you'll see DB Web Query. So you may have documents that are not really related to your Sage ACPAC system. So you may have, as I say, contract documents or legal documents. Well, there's got to be a way to search, and there's got to be a way to retrieve those documents. And what we have is we have a web-based search and retrieval engine, which is what we call DB Web Query, that really allows you to type in your search criteria and drill down for either a single document or maybe a range of documents from a particular date range. DB Authorize, this is our electronic workflow or our electronic approval or routing uh, system. So once the DB Capture system has actually scanned in the document, it's captured the information, you can now initiate the workflow. So if you have multiple offices or multiple locations and you're using paper you know, in between those locations to seek the relevant approval, we can completely control all of that now absolutely electronically. So once the document has been scanned, it's immediately available to, to view, but also to share around your organization. And then lastly, really, the integration with the finance system, which, of course, Sage ACPAC, we enable uh, users to view documents from, for example, an AP transaction inquiry screen. You can drill down on a particular line level on a transaction, and you can view the document that's actually associated with that particular transaction. Not only that, you can also tag or store documents uh, actually for that transaction, so you can actually view the associated documents as well to make more of an educated decision based on that particular transaction. And then lastly, we've got a range of modules what that we call Output Manager. So some of you may be using Printboss, some of you may be using Crystal. We have a business document designing tool that really allows you to also automatically email or fax from the desktop, so nobody actually has to leave their desk to go to the fax. You can email or fax documents from your Sage ACPAC system, either individually or in batches. And of course, the main benefit to our solution is all those documents are electronically stored directly back into your archive system once they've been produced. 
Okay, so as I said, today we're going to focus on finance, but once the concept of document management is within an organization, there are then many, many other business areas that you can really extend document management into, and other departments can really benefit from not being and using and storing paper and being reliant on a very, very slow and expensive process. Okay, so what we're going to do, I'm going to hand you over to Nick, my colleague, and we're going to focus on two areas of business. So first of all, how we capture the purchase and the vendor invoice, and then once it's actually been captured, how we're then going to electronically route that particular document round, searching for the relevant approval to complete that transaction. Okay, Nick? Thank you, Paul. Thank you very much. Okay, I'm just going to show my, uh, my, uh, my desktop now to show you the... The, uh, the software integration. Okay. Okay, hopefully you should now be able to see my, uh, my desktop here. Now, um, okay, as Paul explained, the demonstration here is geared around inbound vendor invoices. So what we're going to do is we're going to take some paper invoices and scan those documents in using our scanning software, where we're going to check the quality of those documents, make sure that the, the information is legible uh, on those documents. Once we've done that, we're going to push those documents across to our OCR application, the DB Capture, where those documents are going to be attempted to be recognized by the system, uh, so it knows which vendor um, it's, it's, uh, the documents have come in from. Uh, once it recognizes the document, it will pull the information off the page automatically. It will then validate that information against inbuilt and configurable rules, uh, as well as against your Sage finance system as well. And then once we've got those documents and all the captured metadata, what we're going to do is store those documents in the archive so that they are immediately available to view throughout the organization. But also in this demonstration, we're going to show you how we can route those documents uh, around the organization using the DV Authorize workflow tool. And obviously, once those documents have been approved for payment, we can then take those transactions and feed them directly into your Sage Finance system as well. So to kick the process off, what we're going to do is we're going to open up the scanning software. Now, this can sit on a, a single PC, multiple PCs around the office, even uh, PCs around the world if need be all scanning into a central location. Um, and the system can be applied to, you know, if you're decentralized or if you are centralized, uh, we can help in, in either instances. So uh, the vendor invoices arrive in the mail, you open them up, you stick them on a hopper on a scanner, you open up this software, and you can see here we're about to scan a batch of documents in. And at this point I can say, actually, this batch of invoices, you know, 50, 100, or 200, however many, um, all relate to this particular um, Sage Appack uh, company, and that's so at the next stage we can validate that information for duplicates, for active vendors, um, open financial periods, etc. So this is a demonstration system, so I'm going to import some previously scanned invoices into the system, but they get fed through the scanner, and we get an information window just letting us know how many documents the system's recognized, um, how many pages, etc. Now at the scanning stage, it's very important to check the quality of these documents. If you're going to put these originals into off-site storage or even destroy the originals, it's very important at this stage to make sure that the, the documents are legible. So we're just going to have a cursory glance through the batch to make sure that everything's uh, okay. And if there's any issues at this stage, you know, you can, you can re-scan documents, changing the scanner options, etc. So now I've checked that batch, I'm going to mark it as having been checked. So this puts an electronic stamp against that batch to say, look, Nick scanned those documents in on November 22nd, and he was happy with the quality of them. And that way, there is recourse back to the um, to the batches. You know, if you do find batches of poorly scanned documents in the future, you, you know where they've been scanned in from, who scanned them in, and when they scanned them. We can also go away to third-party systems at any point in the software and pull in additional data at that stage. But that essentially is the scanner operator's job done. They've scanned the documents in, they check the quality. All they now need to do is export them from the PC site or location where the documents were scanned in from across, in this instance, to our 
DB Capture OCR software. So these have all been or being exported across now, and they've they've left this machine. Now maybe in the same office or a different office with a maybe a different person who has a different function, um, they can use the OCR software. So if I open up the DB Capture OCR, what we should have now is a is a um, a batch of those documents in the list um, being processed and, and waiting for user review. Now, when the documents hit the system, what actually happens is it scans all those pages to see if it can recognize the invoice layouts. And the way it does that, it works on a system of templates. So the first time the system receives a document from a particular vendor, you just need to tell it where the information is on the page. Just by clicking and dragging, um, it will store that so that when the documents come in or new invoices come in from that vendor in future, it will recognize the layout and, and pull the data off the page. So actually in this demonstration what's actually happened here is out of that batch of five documents, uh, four of them have come through okay. It's recognized that the vendor's chloride systems or coastal heating. And because it's recognized the document, it knows where to get the invoice date, the invoice number, and all these other configurable fields. We can set the system up to, to pull any information off the page that you need, uh, as well as maybe pull the information through from third-party databases or systems uh, as well. And there's one document in this list here that the, uh, the system hasn't recognized. So maybe this is a new vendor that we've just started doing business with. Uh, and this is so I can show you how simple it is to, to create a new template within the system. And what we can do here is we can filter by all the OK documents maybe and just accept those. You know, if we're happy and confident in the system, we don't need to go into every individual document if we don't wish to. We can just accept those en masse. Uh, but what I will do here is I'll just go into each of these documents in turn to show you the main client screen and just give you a little bit more information about what's, uh, what's, what's going on with the system here. So we've been dealing with uh, inbound paper invoices in this instance, but um, we don't really care if they're electronic or, or uh, paper documents. If your vendors are emailing you the invoices in PDF format, you can just drag and drop those, um, those PDFs into the system and it will just display them exactly as it is here with this scan document as well. So we can deal with electronic or or paper documents. Now, on this client screen here, we've got the scanned or the, the PDF image on the left-hand side. On the right-hand side, we've got all of these customizable fields. Um, typically, in, in Canada, actually, we'd have more tax fields than this. We'd have a GST, an HST, a PST, but we can change it around for different markets as well. And the system is, is uh, multilingual, uh, multi-currency uh, format compatible as well. Um, but in this instance, when the document hit the system, what it did, it looked on the page to see if it could recognize the document. And when we created this template, we said, look, whenever you see the word chloride systems around here on the page, then this is the, the vendor uh, that the document is from. And then we told it that you need to look over here to get the invoice number, over here to get the invoice date, and so on and so on. And you can see here it also copes with, with textual dates uh, as well and converts those to the numeric date format that your Sage system needs. With regards to dates as well, um, you know, certain regions um, or certain vendors will invoice you in, in different date formats. You can tell the system that what the date format is, and it will remember that for you. So there's no more uh, confusion over, you know, five slash six slash eleven. You know, is that you know fifth of the sixth or is that you know sixth of the fifth? Uh, but as this document came in, it pulled all that information off the page. It validated it against ACPAC and also against internal validation rules as well to maybe check that the um, that the, the values total up correctly, and if for some reason they, they didn't, or it couldn't read the information off the page, maybe there's coffee around there on the page and it couldn't uh, extract the data, um, it's going to give you an error if the, the values don't total up correctly. So if I change that value here and click on check, um, it'll go away behind the scenes, check the information against that pack, and check that those totals do uh, add up correctly. And if they don't, as they don't now, um, you're going to get a configurable warning so this way, we're not going to be attempting to put faulty, incorrect information into your finance system. But as I said before, as this document came in, it uh, recognized it, it extracted successfully. We could have accepted it en masse with all the other OK documents in the previous screen, or I can just accept it uh, on this screen here. And as soon as I click on the Accept button, it takes that document, takes the captured information, and stores that in the archive that is immediately uh, available to view and share throughout your organization now. It showed me the next document in the list here. Again, this one's fine, so I'll just uh, accept that document. 
Uh, please excuse the, the speed of my laptop. It's a little bit slow running this virtual machine. Um, this one's got an order number. Again, if you use purchase order, uh, the purchase ordering system, we can validate the orders, um, check it to have been receipted, uh, pull back the, the open receipted um, item lines and allow you to choose the correct lines against this invoice as well. Okay, I think this is the document that the system didn't recognize. So it's, it's come in. This is the document. Um, there's no template recognized for this uh, vendor's invoice. Maybe we just started doing business with them. Uh, maybe they changed their invoice layout, in which case you know, it hasn't been recognized. It's no big deal. We just need to create a new template. Now, I'm going to talk through the process, obviously, which is going to take it a little bit longer than it normally would do. But first of all, it's going to look on the page when the invoice comes in to see if it can find a tax ID number or a GST, HST reg number. If it finds that on the page and you store those uh, tax IDs against the vendor records in Sage, it will automatically know who the invoice is coming from. And all you need to do is tell it where the information is on the page. If there is no tax ID on the page, well, again, it's no big deal. We just need to find something unique on the page that will uniquely identify this invoice as having come from that vendor. Now, that could be maybe the vendor name. If I click and drag, the fact that it says Excise up here in the top left-hand corner it's probably going to be unique, unless you do have multiple vendors whose name begins with Exide. Maybe the fax number is a better, better thing to use, um, or a zip plus four, or an email address, or a web address. Just something unique to that vendor. I can now do a, a, a direct search into my finance system to pull back the vendor details, or the master vendor record. So I can say, give me all the vendors in my system whose name begins with Exide. I click on check. It does a live lookup into, uh, into Sage. And it's, in this case, it was a unique match. So it's actually pre-filled the vendor code, name, default currency, et cetera. If it returned more than one, it would give me a drop-down list. And I can choose the correct vendor uh, from there. And all we need to do is all these red lines here are telling me I need to find that information. So if I just zoom in slightly here, uh, the invoice number is over here. We just click and drag. And you don't need to be too exact where you select. It knows the data type it's looking for and will expand the selection accordingly. Uh, the data over here, uh, the goods value is, is down the bottom here. Uh, there's no tax on this invoice, but future invoices from this vendor may well contain a, a non-zero tax amount. So we tell it where to look. As those new invoices come through, it will extract that data for us. And then finally, the total uh, invoice amount. Now, if I just click on check, just to validate all that information is correct and you know, totals up and computes correctly, you can see now that the system is, is happy with that. What we've done there is we've created a new template. We told it all about this invoice layout. As soon as I click on accept, it will store that template. It will store that uh, document and the data in the archive for immediate retrieval. Um, and also, in this demonstration, what we're also doing is initiating a workflow request for each of those documents. So we can get these invoices approved for payment electronically. Um, I think this is the last one in the uh, in the batch of the, the documents there. This one's a dot matrix document. The system copes equally well with dot matrix and, and laser printed documents. So I'll just accept that. Um, and I think it should be telling us, yeah, there's no more documents left in this particular OCR profile. So um, this demonstration is geared around vendor invoices. But you could apply this DB Capture OCR to sales orders, statements, or anything else you think you could, you could uh, use you know, to automatically extract data of pages with. So what we've done so far is we've scanned those documents, checked the quality, pushed them across into DB Capture. We've uh, then, uh, we could have accepted them, the OK ones en masse, or, or go into them individually. And those documents have now had the data extracted, and they've been pushed into the next stage. So for the workflow, all those documents have gone into a default route in this demonstration. We can actually automatically route the documents by any information that we've captured so far. So maybe uh, the location they've been scanned in from, the vendor code, the value, um, anything else really. Any data we've captured, we can automatically route documents based on that. So behind the scenes, I've set this up to automatically drop those documents into my AP clerk's inbox. So behind the scenes, my AP clerk should have received, uh, in this case, five emails say, look, you've got some new documents to, to approve, to, to action. Now, we can actually batch these emails up. So maybe, you know, 10.30 in the morning, 3.30 in the afternoon, you just get one email 
saying you've got five new authorization requests and you've got 22 outstandings. Um, it's all completely customizable and configurable. And then the, the authorizer or whoever needs to action this document just clicks on a link in their email and it goes directly to the browser-based workflow software, DB Authorize. Now, in DB Authorize, um, actually within all our applications, we've got something called Active Directory Integration. And in simple terms, that means it looks at your Windows login to determine whether you've got access uh, to certain functions within the system. So you don't need to remember different logins and different usernames and passwords. It can be set up to use your, your Windows login if need be. Which is why, actually, in this instance, it's logged me in as the version 1 user. So let me just, um, you can see in this list view here, this is everything that's in the inbox that version 1 can see. So we've got five documents who are with the first person, who is somebody called AP user, and these documents are on a route called the default route. I'm just going to change my login to be the, uh, to be the AP clerk, so that my audit trail looks correct in the, in the latter stages. Because everything that happens against these documents gets stored in the audit trail, which is actually linked to the invoice image itself. So later on, from within the SAGE system, we can show you how to drill down from the inquiry screen to view transactions. Uh, from the transactions, you can view the document image. And then from there, you can also see how the document got approved, which route it took throughout the organization to get approved. Um, so I've got a lot of documents in my inbox to process. I want to take a look at, uh, at one of these, or each of these in, in turn. In the main client screen here, you can see we've got the document image on the right-hand side. We've got the, the captured data up in the top left here. And again, as before, all these fields and the labels are completely customizable. But I suppose most importantly is the grid control. Um, again, we have multiple columns here. Maybe have a GL description. Um, if you use optional fields, we can insert these as well at the line level. Um, now, I can either manually code this document up, or I can actually click on a button up here, and that will do a lookup directly into Sage and bring down my live chart of accounts into the workflow software. So I can actually code this document up, maybe break it down into however many lines it needs to be broken down into. Um, I can even enter percentages here, and it will, it will work those out for me. Um, or maybe if I get a, a cell phone bill that comes in every month that needs to be broken down in the same GL codes to the same departments, I can copy and paste from Excel into this grid control here as well. But in this demonstration, my AP clerk, uh, clerk is going to uh, code these documents up and then manually route the documents to where they need to go to. But it depends on how your organization works. Maybe it needs to automatically route to a site manager who would code up and then approve it, and it will pop back into the AP team. All of that routing is completely customizable. So I've coded this document up. I'm going to route it. In this case, I know that this needs to go to my estates department route to get approved. So I click on OK. It leaves my inbox and goes to whoever the first person is on that estates department route. It then shows me the next document in my inbox. Again, I can code this to wherever it needs to go, break it down. Um, I can approve it at this stage, you know, based on the on the routing rules. In this instance, I'll route it to the uh, to the same uh, location. And it shows me the next document, the next document. So you can see what you're not doing here is you're not waiting for people to photocopy documents to maybe pass them through internal mail, external mail, and all the delays, and you know I've lost my document, which you know I never received a copy of that document. Everything's electronic and held um, within the system. Um, as a higher authority user, you can see those two documents that we've just processed now are with the first person on the estates department route, who is somebody called manager. Uh, the last action was that the AP clerk changed the route on these. But as the AP clerk, I could maybe send the manager an email to say, look, you need to get a move on with this. You know, we can automate email reminders. So if you've got the payment terms stored in the system, we've got the invoice date, if it's getting to within three, four, five days of that due date, we can automate an email and maybe escalate emails to get these documents um, or these invoices paid on time. Um, so Behind the scenes then, uh, let me just close that down. That's AP clerk has done their job. Behind the scenes, the manager should have received three emails, in this case just two for the, the new authorization entries, and the reminder uh, email that I've just sent to the AP clerk. So the manager receives an email, goes into the system, takes a look at their documents that are awaiting approval. <clears throat> now again, it's obviously logged me in as my version, my Windows user here, so I'll just quickly change user as manager. Okay, and you see here, as the as a location manager here, I only have access to view and approve my own documents. 
there's various different levels uh, of permissions we can configure in the system as to whether you can see other people's documents or approve on their behalf, etc. And everything is fully audited uh, as well. So as an approver, I take a look at this document. Um, I could either maybe code it myself, or maybe in this case it's come through pre-coded for me. I can take a look at that and say, yeah, I'm happy with that. Maybe if I'm scanning in my goods received notes, or um, it's an order-based invoice, I can view any related documents that are linked to this, or automatically linked to this in the system. Um, I know that there isn't an order against this document, uh, but you can just click on the link button and it will show you related documents. But as an approver, um, I, can, I can see this and say, yeah, I'm happy with it, or no, I'm not, or maybe I need to place it on hold whilst I go and check to see whether my goods are delivered. Now, this particular route that this document are, is on is set up so that manager only has budgetary approval up to $2,000. Anything more than that, and it will automatically route to uh, a higher authority for further approval. So I'm going to say, yeah, I'm happy with that. And in this instance, that should have gone to somebody called director uh, for further budgetary approval. Um, this document's in here, and I'm happy with that. Yeah, it looks good to me. Um, maybe I can zoom in on this document. I'll show you how we can also add annotations to documents as well, either in list view or in post-it note format. So maybe this is a partial uh, delivery uh, pay anyway, or whatever you want to leave against the document. Uh, in here, it's, uh, it's set up there as a, as a, um, a post-it note, and these can get date stamped and time stamped with your login against those uh, documents. And again, they never affect uh, the original document. For auditing purposes, they must remain exactly uh, as they entered your uh, organization. But well, I'm going to approve that document, so it leaves my inbox, and that's it. I've done my done my job. I can get on with my day job now. I've approved those documents, and there's nothing left in my inbox to process. So uh, behind the scenes, then, those documents have gone off down these different configurable routes, and if I do a send and receive, that one that was over $2,000 has now routed to somebody called Mrs. Director for further approval. The one that was under $2,000 has actually gone back in, according to the rules that we've configured, into the inbox for the AP clerk to, uh, to process the document. So I think you can gather, really, that the, the routings are configurable. Um, they're actually configurable within the software itself, itself via the, uh, the, the GUI here. Um, so I've got one document here that's with the second person on the Estates Department route. We've got one that's with the third person on that route. Maybe um, you want to reject this document. Uh, there may be a reason why you don't want to pay it. Maybe the, the goods were uh, not delivered. I'm not going to pay this document. And that will, that will get fully uh, rejected in the system. So that's now been failed completely in the system. Or maybe the director is going to approve this, or me as the version 1 user is going to approve it on their behalf, in which case it goes to the AP clerk, the final checking of those GL codes before it hits the final accept and can then be uploaded into the finance system. So we've got one document that's been fully approved and one that's been fully rejected. What we've actually got against these documents is a full audit trail. So if I click on the link here, we can see what happened to that document throughout its life in the V1 system. So you can see here in this configurable, configurable audit trail, it came in as a new entry at this date and time. AP clerk changed some information and changed the route. Manager accepted it, and then version 1 accepted it at that time. I've also stored the coding information against that document as well. So maybe if you're short on land pack licenses, um, or people need to access these documents and see which departments or nominal codes they were coded to outside of your finance system, we can do that as well uh, within the V1 system. So pretty much that's the, the workflow software. Um, so we've scanned, we've captured, we've pushed into workflow, we've got documents approved or rejected. Um, and then what we can do is, with these fully approved documents, we can uh, upload or have those uploaded into the finance system. Now, I'm going to manually upload those documents, but we can schedule these to be an automated upload at certain points throughout the day. Because we've only approved one document, what we should now have within my Sage APAC system is a new batch created with just that one document in it. Obviously, if there's outstanding multiple documents, you'd have a new batch with multiple documents uh, uh, contained within. Now, I'm using a slightly older version of ACPAC here. We work with version 5, version 5.5, uh, 5.6, 5, 5, version 6.0, and also 6.1 when it eventually uh, gets released. Um, so within the finance uh, system here, what we've done is we've taken the standard um, screen. So if we take a look at the batch entry screen here, just to show you, if I go to the most recent batch, we've got that new uh, transaction uh, in the system here that's been uploaded today, just, just one entry in this batch here. 
Um, and you can see we've got the coding information that we've, we've uh, that we uh, coded the document to. And what we can do, maybe from this screen, we can actually take a look from directly from APAC to view the document image itself. We can also see the audit trail directly from uh, that screen as well. So here's the image and any other related documents. We can add multiple related documents. Maybe if you have backing documentation that comes in at a later date, you can scan those in and they can get automatically linked to the original uh, invoice image as well. But if I, if I quickly link to the audit trail, you can see from APAC, you can drill down to the image, you can then drill down to the, to the audit trail as well. Uh, I suppose viewing documents from the, the batch entry screen is not too useful. Um, what we can also do is from your vendor activity screen, uh, if I take a look at, um, I can't remember which one I approved there, but if I take a look at chloride systems, what we've done again on this screen is added um, a view document button. So you can select a line that you're interested in, click on view document, and it'll go away directly to our DB web query application and bring back the document relating to that transaction. And again, what you can do from here is you can you can view any related documents, you can email a copy of this out. If somebody needs a, a copy of that document, we can email it out. Um, or maybe add, you know, post-it notes to this uh, to this document like we did, like we did before. Okay. Okay. So that's how we can get transactions approved and uploaded, and then drill down from the, the transactions in your finance system directly to um, the document images stored in our archive. And then finally, outside of the the finance system, uh, we've also got the ability to drill down and query for documents. So maybe. Um, You've got auditors on site at the end of the year, and they go into your AP team and say, look, can you get me all the documents for chloride systems between January and March, over $5,000? You know, it's a pretty tall order to ask for the AP team, and that takes time, and auditors are, you know, they're charged by the hour. What you can do is just sit them down in front of a PC, give them access to the uh, the web browser here, and um, they can log in. When I remember my login, there we go. They can log into the system and self-serve for their own documents. Now, within the archive itself, because this is what we're querying here, the document archive, you can store any document type, as Paul mentioned before, HR, contracts, uh, not just invoices in the system, and you can compound search against any of these documents as well. And based upon the document type, gives you the different search criteria that you can use on these. So I wanted to find all my chloride systems invoices. So chloride systems, the vendor name begins with chloride, let's say over... Uh, greater than $500, press return, and it goes away to the archive and brings back a list of all that matching data. We can export this out as, as CSV into, into Excel if need be, or we can take a look at multiple documents and, and print, fax, or email those, those documents out. Or again, if we're just interested in a specific document, we can click on the link button, and again, it takes you directly to that, uh, that image viewing screen. So, what we've done here, we've gone through an awful lot, and I appreciate it's a sort of whirlwind tour of just one way in which the software can be configured. Um, each of the software are modules, so I mean, you don't need to, if you didn't want the OCR, if you just wanted a barcode scanning solution to store documents and maybe do away with your, your filing cabinet in the office, we can, we can provide that for you, and you can mix and match between the, uh, between the different applications. Uh, so what I'd like to do now is just pass you back to uh, my colleague, Paul. Um, uh, to continue with the uh, the presentation. Okay, thanks, Nick. Well, thanks very much for that. Obviously, just a few highlights. Without document management, um, as you probably can gather, you know, manual data is very, very expensive to process. It's also very, very prone to error. Documents do get lost. They do get misfiled. They do get misplaced. So document retrieval obviously becomes, you know, a real headache. And as Nick mentioned, you know, if we can cut down the amount of money that people spend on auditors, then obviously, you know, document management as, uh, as a product has sort of hidden benefits as well. Disaster recovery, a lot of clients plan for disaster recovery of data, but never of document recovery, which is obviously, imagine if you lost, you know, two, three years worth of documents, how would you actually recover from that position? And then lastly, you know, storage of documents. I think if you walk into an organization and you see boxes of paper scattered all over an office, that really, really does say a lot about that particular organization. But with our solution, we can capture data using our OCR technology at header level. 
and also at line level. And as Nick's shown you, how we train the system to capture the data, what business rules we apply and for how it does that. And obviously, the major benefit is once something's actually been scanned, it's immediately available to view across your organization, but also to share across your organization as well. In terms of approvals, sending documents through the mail internally, very, very expensive. The more locations you have, obviously, increases the cost. And delays in approval. You know, we all hate the term late fees, but if something can't be paid on time, then obviously late fees are usually incurred because there's bottlenecks or there's inefficiencies within an organization. And clearly, delays in payment usually costs more money. But, you know, documents, as I say, they do get lost. And without any tracking facility, it's difficult to know where they are, who had them last, and more importantly, where are they to do something with it. But with our solution, everything gets delivered electronically. The users are instantly told that there's something awaiting their, you know, awaiting their attention. And there's a complete administration tool as well, for tracking where everything's been, who's had it, when they did something with it. And we also empower the finance system, uh, sorry, the finance users with a complete reminder facility. So if something, somebody's not really doing the job properly and approving something, we can, we can empower the AP team to send them reminders. But obviously the, the cost, you know, why use document management? Why use V1 document management? Well, there's a few highlights on the screen. I won't go through each one. Saving time, cost, and money. Um, you know, making staff more productive. So once something's available, they can make immediate decisions on it rather than waiting three days for the mail to arrive or via a very expensive courier. Compliance issues. Has the government become more and more, you know, sort of environmentally friendly. Clearly, the compliance initiatives are going to be on the rise. And obviously, V1 can empower you now to ensure that you can meet those compliance initiatives. Disaster recovery, as we've mentioned, you know, version control. So if you're changing documents, such as HR, you know, so once somebody's completing a training program, for example, then again, we can give you a full history of everything that's happened to date. And then lastly, you know, not really to be dismissed, you know, the whole green agenda. We do have an organization that's looking to improve the way that, you know, that they sort of look after the environment. Then obviously V1 can go a long way to satisfying those targets as well. Well, the cost of paper, you know, not just using paper, storing paper, filing paper, copying paper, you know, office costs cost of people, and as I mentioned, the compliance initiatives, they're all on the increase, they're all on the rise. But really, the cost of storage is, has significantly come down over the last few years. So, for example, you can now buy a terabyte of storage for $100, which will give you, you know, the equivalent of a 1,000 copies of the Encyclopedia Britannica. So that's a, that's a huge cost saving, a huge comparison to make as well. And of course, the cost of scanners has also come down as well. And obviously, most multifunctional devices these days also have the ability to scan as well. But really, bringing visibility to the return on investment, as I mentioned at the, uh, at the start, you know, these are actual numbers that we've got from a company called Gartner, who's a very, very well-respected industry analyst um, that really you know, gauges everything that happens within the IT industry. So a few highlights, you know, 7% 7, 7 of documents on average get lost. You know, the, um, it basically takes 25 hours to recreate the information from a lost document, which, you know, you add that up based on somebody's salary per hour, that can be a significant amount of money. You know, spending $25,000 to fill a manual metal four-drawer cabinet and the approximate cost of $2,000 every year just to maintain it. You know, but adding to that, document management is also one of the top 10 techn technological priorities in the world today. So you know, all we can do is we can urge clients and organizations to really try and find out what your return on investment will be from a document management solution. Now, V1 can help you to do that. So there's some very basic questions that we'll ask. You know, so how many filing cabinets do you have? Do you use an off-site storage facility? So, you know, does that cost you money to store paper? 
somewhere else? Or more importantly, do you use a third-party storage company? So, for example, Iron Mountain, if you have an organization like that, you're really entrusting your completely confidential records to somebody that may have rogue employees. They charge you the facility to store the paper, and they also charge you the facility to bring them back, which my analogy that I also always like to use is, would you really trust your neighbor to look after your bank statements? It's a, it's a huge risk to your organization. And of course, you know, who's to stop competitors getting hold of your financial records over the previous 12 months? Other things like, you know, how many copies are made of incoming documents and how many human beings actually touch that piece of paper as part of that process. So these are just some of the questions that we ask as part of our return on investment study. We spend a lot of time with it, every client going through the process and really understanding how the solution can benefit their organization, but more importantly, you know, how quickly it can actually pay for itself as well. So um, thank you very, very much, everybody, uh, for your attendance today. Um, hopefully, we've, we've gained some interest in, in V1 document management, and I'm sure we've shown you ways that we believe we can save you time, money, and indeed space. Uh, but obviously, in, a, in conjunction with a partnership with BAS, um, what I'd like to do now is just hand you back to Imran, and if it's possible, if we can open the lines, Imran, for any questions, or whether you just want to wrap up and, and sort of uh, allow any questions to be emailed. Hey, Paul, thanks so much. Um, that sounded great. Um, I just We did have a couple of questions that did come in. Uh, I was hoping you can address during the course of the presentation. One of them was, um, is there is there companies, what's the typical organization look like that goes with one of these systems? You know, is it very specific to a vertical or is it, you know, the size? Um, can you speak to that a little bit? Yeah, basically anybody with, um, anybody that's really reliant on paper, um, sort of more than one location, is another um, opportunity. In terms of verticals, we we supply systems to 80% of the hospitals in the UK, for example. We've done very, very well with healthcare over here. We do very, very well with insurance companies and, and also with banks. But really, if, a, if, if processes within an organization, irrespective of vertical or irrespective of size, are really taking time because of paper, then really, you know, that's where V1 document management has a fit, um, a perfect fit in terms of, you know, really taking the whole process electronically. But I think to really to summarize um, the answer, you know, we are in effect like an email system for businesses. So imagine the last time any human being communicated by taking out a piece of paper, handwriting a letter, put it in an envelope, putting a stamp on it and driving down to the post office, or these days, do we just send an email? And of course, we just send an email. So many, many businesses are still communicating by the reliance on paper and by the reliance on you know physical documentation. So I do like to consider ourselves as a sort of email solution, in effect, you know, for uh, small, medium, and, and large size organizations. Okay, awesome. Um, another question, of course, uh, was what type of cost is associated with these products? Okay, well, one of the things that I've, I've done with Kevin Hollis, um, who's the VP of Business Development from, from Bass, is really we have some, uh, we've agreed some bundle pricing, which basically means that we've, we've really, because ACPAC is a sort of medium enterprise finance package, what we've done is we've we've got some specific pricing based on um, you know based on some bundle pricing so you can choose bundle A bundle B and bundle C obviously the costs um, are really de dependent upon the functionality but the the entry level cost for a a storage solution from Bass uh, kind of starts out at seven and a half thousand dollars if you then start adding a bit like with ACPAC if you then start adding in additional modules you know clearly the cost can obviously go up by the time you add in the additional modules. But as I say, for a, for a five user entry level system for, for storage and for um, barcoding invoice management, it's $7,500 and upwards. 
Okay. Uh, Paul, what's a typical implementation time for a system like this? Okay, for the for the entry level system for the five user, um, the actual um, sort of services deployment is actually three days work. Um, so that's install training, you know, and, and obviously a bit of configuration, and you know, we'll actually supply the app pack integration as part of that project as well. Um, you know, we we do have some clients that you know the sort of typical project has gone into sort of a dozen or fifteen days once they start adding in various configurations and complex OCR capturing and complex validations. But, you know, we, we basically start, for the entry-level solution, it's three days, and for the larger projects, it can be anything sort of around 15 days. Okay, perfect. Um, that sounds good. Uh, if anybody has any additional questions, you can certainly add them to the chat window as well as email me directly. Um, we will be following up with a, a thank you email, and you can certainly respond to that. Um, any any closing thoughts that you want to add there, Paul? No, just as I say, I'd just like to thank everybody, you know, sincerely for allowing us the opportunity uh, to present not only a V1 solution, but also V1 as an organization. And I believe that, you know, the culture of our organization is a, is a perfect fit to BAS, and we've, we've got a very healthy and strong relationship, which really allows BAS to improve uh, the sort of act pack um, setup for, for your clients. But as I say, we've, we've actually got a product here that can genuinely save, you know, act pack, the, the BAS client, Space, you know, lots and lots of time and lots and lots of money, and as I say, indeed, storage space as well. So uh, I'm looking forward to, uh, you know, helping clients out to, you know, work out what their return on investment will be, and I'm certainly looking forward to, uh, you know, explaining in more detail, um, obviously, the way that our solution can, you know, can really help organizations. But other than that, I'd say just a big, huge thank you, Imran, from, from myself and Nick. Yeah, absolutely. Perfect. Uh, one more question did come in. Um, what type of scanner does the system use? And uh, I know you touched a little bit on that, but uh, can you elaborate? Yeah, we um, we tend to, a lot of clients initially tend to use multifunctional devices, so they tend to have these already within their office. What we do tend to find is that, you know, sometimes people will be in line to sort of use those machines for copying and things like that. So. Initially, we tend to go with um, multifunctional devices, or indeed, if, if the client is intent on, you know, having a dedicated scanner, and we've actually got a very, very good relationship with Kodak, so we can make recommendations and actually do like a sizing specification for the scanner. The technical answer to the question is any scanner that's Twain or ISIS, ISIS compatible, then we actually have the drivers to make, you know, any existing scanners or anything compatible with the solution as well. But, you know, if you imagine the, the solution's kind of $10,000 $10, on average, and, uh, you know, a typical scanner can sort of retail for about $1,000, we will always recommend a dedicated, a dedicated scanner wherever possible, because clearly, you know, that, that's, the real, that's the real engine behind the vehicle. You know, the initial scan is really, the, is really where the quality is ever so important. So uh, hopefully that answers that question, Imran. Okay, that's uh, that's perfect. Awesome. Um, you know, with that, I'm going to close off the presentation. Um, everybody will be getting a recorded link of this presentation. Um, so if you do want to revert back to it or share it with uh, your team there, that would be great. Um, also, you know, do check our BASS website slash events. We um, carry multiple events like this uh, throughout the year, and I really encourage all of you to email me with suggestions because, you know, we try to make it as... Um, as uh, important to you as it is to us in terms of getting you the right sort of information at the right time. I want to thank Nick and Paul for the great presentation and uh, thank you all for participating. Thanks so much.